Did you know 36 people are meeting behind closed doors to determine the fate of over half of our planet? No. Anyone? <laughs> That's fascinating. This is a group of ocean experts. <laughs> the International Seabed Authority, the ISA, was created by the UN's Law of the Sea Treaty, and they have jurisdiction in over 50% of the entire Earth's surface. Currently, there's negotiations over the exploitation regulations that would essentially launch a new extractive industry known as deep sea mining. Because of a loophole called the two-year trigger, industrial deep sea mining could begin even without regulations as soon as July 2023. So what is deep sea mining? Deep sea mining is the process of extracting mineral deposits, namely rare earth minerals, from the deep sea an area below 600 feet or 200 meters in our international waters. Why are rare earth minerals important? Right now, humanity is faced with a huge, urgent crisis, the climate crisis. And to solve for climate, we need solutions, EVs, renewables, batteries. And to build these, we need rare earth minerals, like lithium, nickel, cobalt, manganese. Typically, we mine these minerals from land. And now, mining interests are looking to the ocean floor for these resources. So where do you find them? There's three habitats of interest, seamounts, hydrothermal vents, and abyssal plains. Today, I'm going to talk about the third, because there's the most interest and misconceptions around polymetallic nodule mining. So what is a polymetallic nodule? Imagine a shark's tooth falls to the seafloor, and over millions of years, it forms this baseball-sized nodule. They contain copper, cobalt, nickel, and manganese. So why are these important? First of all, they're irreplaceable. They take 13 million years to form. So just for reference, woolly mammoths roamed this earth 10,000 years ago. 10,000 years ago makes 13 million years look like a blink of an eye. And they're living ecosystems. Simply put, when you take out the nodules, you take out the habitat. Life in and around them will take millions of years to recover, if at all. And we will lose important ecosystem functions. These polymetallic nodules themselves are important for capturing and storing carbon in the seabed. So why is deep sea mining bad? Just like clear cutting an old growth forest and leaving nothing behind, deep sea mining is like clear cutting the ocean. Mining companies say nodules are like potatoes on the seafloor just waiting 13 million years to be plucked up. But in reality, it's a highly invasive and destructive process to mine them. Biodiversity loss is guaranteed and unavoidable. Here you can see the plumes that are stirred up for mining. Plumes are also created once they're dumped in from the mining vessel through a process called the dewatering plume. And what's important is these plumes have impact that's four to five times the scale of the area mined. So we're talking about a scale, a massive impact scale that has never been seen in mining before. Some of the other effects are exemplified by this chart. The effects will be felt throughout the water column. It threatens whales and other deep diving creatures, as well as filter feeders. Toxic metals are introduced from the wastewater plume and also at the mining site. And light and noise pollution can seriously disrupt and even kill species. That might not seem like a big deal to us, but these creatures have evolved with light and noise being their sense of communication uh, and ways to live in the deep sea and throughout the water column. We know so little about this ecosystem. Over 99% of the seabed is unexplored. Deep sea mining will permanently destroy fragile ecosystems before we even get a chance to fully understand them. The deep sea is closer than outer space, yet we know more about the moon and have better maps of Mars than we do of the deep sea. In the deep sea, we know life exists and hides the secrets to our origins, innovations, and medicines. For example, one of the critical components of the COVID-19 test was developed from a microbe in the hydrothermal vents. 
If we move forward with deep sea mining, we lose the opportunity to discover new species, innovations, and medicines. The deep sea is virtually an unexplored aquatic wonderland filled with odd and amazing creatures that defy belief. Glow-in-the-dark and six-skilled sharks, delicate gelatinous creatures, deep-dwelling octopuses like this Dumbo you see here, and thousands of other species yet to be identified by science. The deep sea is the last untouched wilderness on Earth. And while it feels far and foreign to you and me, the deep sea supports our ability to live and thrive on this planet as it creates climate. It is critical for the ocean food web, which coastal communities also rely on for food, for culture, for economies. And the deep sea is one of the largest carbon sinks on Earth. Isn't disrupting ancient carbon sinks the reason why we're faced with the climate crisis in the first place? At a time where 150 species go extinct every day, deep sea mining threatens mass biodiversity loss, jeopardizes vulnerable frontline communities and fisheries, and risks exacerbating the climate crisis. Studies show even after small-scale deep-sea mining experiments, carbon cycling has not recovered after 26 years. So we're back to this question, how are we going to get these rare earth minerals? The deep-sea mining industry has painted a false dichotomy that we have to choose between land mining or deep-sea mining. In reality, it's not land mining or deep-sea mining, it's land mining and deep-sea mining. Deep sea mining will be an extension of already harmful land-based land mining practices and extend it into new depths. So what are the alternatives? We need less minerals than we think. That's the good news. We can reduce demand by 58% by 2050 with new technology, circular economy models, and recycling. New technology can reduce demand by 30%. So many new breakthroughs are being created and implementation now that are reducing and replacing minerals. One example is lithium iron phosphate batteries, which you might have heard about. No nickel, no cobalt, no manganese. And they're already in production with Tesla and other EVs like BYD, Ford, and Volkswagen are not far behind in incorporating these batteries. Circular economy models can further reduce demand by 18%. This means using minerals we already have. This could look like improving products lifespan, reducing demand for minerals, and urban mining. And by recycling better, we can reduce demand by a further 10%. Currently, 80% of our electronic waste is being thrown away. We can and need to do better than that. The point is, we don't need deep sea mining. And the good news is, there has never been a better time to act. Momentum is building to leave the industry behind. Just last week, the largest corporate backer, Lockheed Martin, pulled its funding. And financial institutions like the World Bank, European Investment Bank, UNEP, FI, are all warning deep sea mining is actually not financially viable. International companies are pledging they won't use minerals from the deep sea. Examples of this, Google, BMW, Samsung, Volvo, Rivian, Volkswagen, and many more. And the most important thing is political winds are shifting. Countries are now calling for a halt to deep sea mining. Some countries coming out for a full ban, like France, and other countries calling for a moratorium to stop deep sea mining. But we need more countries' support. Some of these countries recently called out the Secretary General of the ISA for stepping outside of his neutral facilitator role. This is one of the many examples of the ISA's larger problem. It has an inherent conflict of interest, both as the profiteer and the steward of the deep sea. The ISA has already awarded 31 licenses. This is just the licenses in the CCZ, which is about half. If allowed to begin, this will be the largest mining operation in history, totaling an area two times the size of France, and that's just the beginning. The law of the sea states, the deep sea is the common heritage of humankind. That means the ocean floor and its resources are the common heritage of you and me. So shouldn't we have a say in what happens? So what can we do? 
Call on your countries to say no to deep sea mining. Use your realm of influence to do what you can and spread the word. And for more resources, you can go to the Oxygen Project online or on socials to learn how you can take collective action and learn more. And while momentum for a moratorium is shifting, the window to act is closing. What will you do to defend the deep so the ocean, the planet, and humanity can thrive for generations to come? Thank you.